The internal conflict in Peru is an ongoing armed conflict between the government of Peru, the Communist Party of Peru, better known as Shining Path or PCPSL, and the Tupac Amaru Revolutionary Movement. The conflict began on May 17, 1980. Estimates indicate that there have been nearly 70,000 deaths, making it the bloodiest war in Peruvian history since the European colonization of the country. The high death toll includes many civilian casualties resulting from deliberate targeting by many factions. Recently, however, the conflict has become dormant as the number of deaths dropped significantly since the year 2000. There were low-level resurgences of violence in 2002 and 2014 when conflict erupted between the Peruvian army and guerrilla remnants in the VRAEM region. The conflict has lasted for over 38 years, making it the second longest internal conflict in the history of Latin America, after the Colombian armed conflict. <laughs> Background Prior to the conflict, Peru had undergone a series of coups with frequent switches between different parties and ideologies. On October 2, 1968, General Juan Velasco Alvarado staged a military coup and became Peru's 56th president under the administration of the Revolutionary Government of the Armed Forces, a left-leaning military dictatorship. Following a period of widespread poverty and unemployment, Velasco himself was overthrown by a bloodless military coup on August 29, 1975, and was replaced by Francisco Morales Bermudez as the new president of Peru. Morales made an announcement that his rule would provide a second phase to the previous administration, which would bring great political and economic reform to the country. However, he was unsuccessful in delivering on his promises and in 1978 a constitutional assembly was created to replace Peru's 1933 constitution. Morales then proclaimed that national elections would be held by 1980. Elections were held for the Constituent Assembly on June 18, 1978, martial law was imposed on January 6, 1979, and the assembly approved the new constitution in July 1979. On May 18, 1980 Fernando Belanda Terry was elected president. During the years between February 1966 and July 1980 about 500 people died in political violence, many affiliated with Peru's Communist Party had opposed the creation of the new constitution and formed the extremist organization known as the Shining Path. This ultimately led to the beginning of Peru's internal conflict, with the first attacks taking place only a day before the elections. Despite this, national elections continued and Fernando Belán Terry was elected as the 58th president of Peru in 1980. Terry had already served as the country's 55th president prior to Velasco's coup in 1968. Topic: <inaudible> Rise of Shining Path. During the governments of Velasco and Morales, Shining Path had been organized as a Maoist political group based at the San Cristobal of Huamanga University in the Ayacucho region. It was founded in 1970, and led by Abimael Guzman, a communist professor of philosophy at the San Cristobal of Huamanga University. Guzman had been inspired by the Cultural Revolution, which he had witnessed firsthand during a trip to China. Shining Path members engaged in street fights with members of other political groups and painted graffiti exhorting armed struggle against the Peruvian state. Topic: <inaudible> Outbreak of hostilities. When Peru's military government allowed elections for the first time in a dozen years in 1980, Shining Path was one of the few leftist political groups that declined to take part, instead opting to launch guerrilla warfare actions against the state in the highlands of the province of Ayacucho. On May 17, 1980, the eve of the presidential elections, they burned ballot boxes in the town of Chushi, Ayacucho. It was the first act of terrorism by Shining Path. Nonetheless, the perpetrators were quickly caught and additional ballots were brought in to replace the burned ballots. The elections proceeded without any further incidents, with the act receiving very little attention in the Peruvian press. Shining Path opted to fight in the style taught by Mao Zedong. They would open up guerrilla zones, in which their guerrillas could operate and drive government forces out of these zones to create liberated zones. These zones would then be used to support new guerrilla zones until the entire country was essentially one big liberated zone. 
Shining Path also adhered to Mao's teaching that guerrilla should be fought primarily in the countryside and gradually choke off the cities. On December 3, 1982, the Shining Path officially formed a People's Guerrilla Army, its armed wing. Topic: <laughs> Tupac Amaru Revolutionary Movement. In 1982, the Tupac Amaru Revolutionary Movement MRTA launched its own guerrilla against the Peruvian state. The group had been formed by remnants of the movement of the revolutionary left in Peru and identified with Castroite guerrilla movements in other parts of Latin America. The MRTA used techniques that were more traditional to Latin American leftist organizations than those used by Shining Path. For example, the MRTA wore uniforms, claimed to be fighting for true democracy and complained of human rights abuses by the state, while Shining Path did not wear uniforms and had little regard for the democratic process and human rights. During the conflict, the MRTA and Shining Path engaged in combat with each other. The MRTA played a small part in the overall conflict, being declared by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to have been responsible for 1.5% of deaths accumulated throughout the conflict. At its height, the MRTA was believed to have consisted of only a few hundred members. Government response Gradually, the Shining Path committed more and more violent attacks on the National Police of Peru and the Lima-based government could no longer ignore the growing crisis in the Andes. In 1981, Fernando Balan Terry declared a state of emergency and ordered that the Peruvian armed forces fight the Shining Path. Constitutional rights were suspended for 60 days in Huamanga Province, Wanta Province, Cangalo Province, Lamar Province, and Victor Fajardo Province. Later, the armed forces created the Ayacucho Emergency Zone, in which military power was superior to civilian power, and many constitutional rights were suspended. The military committed many human rights violations in the area where it had political control, including the infamous Acomarca massacre. Scores of peasants were massacred by the armed forces. A special U.S.-trained, counter-terrorist, police battalion known as the Sinchis, were particularly notorious in the 80s for their human rights violations. <laughs> Escalation of the conflict The reaction of the Shining Path to the Peruvian government's use of the military in the conflict was not to back down, but instead to ramp up the level of violence in the countryside. Shining Path attacked police officers, soldiers, and civilians that it considered to be class enemies, often using particularly gruesome methods of killing their victims. These killings, along with Shining Path's disrespect for the culture of indigenous peasants it claimed to represent, turned many people in the Sierra away from the group. Faced with a hostile population, the Shining Path's guerrilla began to falter. In some areas, some fearful, well-off peasants formed anti-Shining Path patrols, called rondas. They were generally poorly equipped, despite donations of guns from the armed forces. Nevertheless, Shining Path guerrillas were militarily attacked by the rondas. The first such reported attack was in January 1983 near Wada, where some rondas killed 13 guerrillas. In February in Saxamarca, rondas stabbed and killed the Shining Path commanders of that area. In March 1983, rondas brutally killed Oligario Curitome, one of the commanders of the town of Lucanamarca. They took him to the town square, stoned him, stabbed him, set him on fire, and finally, shot him. As a response, in April, Shining Path entered the province of Huancasincos and the towns of Yanacalpa, Atacara, Lachua, Mulacruz, and Lucanamarca and killed 69 people, many of whom were children, including one who was only six months old. Also killed were several women, some of them pregnant. Most of them died by machete hacks and some were shot at close range in the head. This was the first massacre committed by Shining Path against the peasant community. Other incidents followed, such as the one in Hawalo, Tambo District, Lamar Province and Ayacucho Department. In that community, Shining Path killed 47 peasants, including 14 children aged 4 to 15. Additional massacres by Shining Path occurred, such as one in Marcus on August 29, 1985. The Shining Path, like the government, filled its ranks by conscription. The Shining Path also kidnapped children and forced them to fight as child soldiers in their actions. Topic. Administration of Alberto Fujimori and decline 
Under the administration of Alberto Fujimori the state started its widespread use of intelligence agencies in its fight against Shining Path. Some atrocities were allegedly committed by the National Intelligence Service, notably the La Cantuta Massacre, the Barrios Altos Massacre and the Santa Massacre. On April 5, 1992, Fujimori dissolved the Congress of Peru and abolished the Constitution, initiating the Peruvian Constitutional Crisis of 1992. The reason for these actions was that the Congress was slow to pass anti-terrorism legislation. Fujimori set up military courts to try suspected members of the Shining Path and MRTA, and ordered that an «iron fist» approach be used. Fujimori also announced that Peru would no longer be under the jurisdiction of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. As Shining Path began to lose ground in the Andes to the Peruvian state and the Rondas, it decided to speed up its overall strategic plan. Shining Path declared that it had reached strategic equilibrium and was ready to begin its final assault on the cities of Peru. In 1992, Shining Path set off a powerful bomb in the Miraflores district of Lima in what became known as the Tirada bombing. This was part of a larger bombing campaign to follow suit in Lima. On September 12, 1992, Peruvian police captured Guzman and several Shining Path leaders in an apartment above a dance studio in the Cerquillo district of Lima. The police had been monitoring the apartment, as a number of suspected Shining Path militants had visited it. An inspection of the garbage of the apartment produced empty tubes of a skin cream used to treat psoriasis, a condition that Guzman was known to have. Shortly after the raid that captured Guzman, most of the remaining Shining Path leadership fell as well. At the same time, Shining Path suffered embarrassing military defeats to peasant self-defense organizations, supposedly its social base, and the organization fractured into splinter groups. Guzman's role as the leader of Shining Path was taken over by Oscar Ramirez, who himself was captured by Peruvian authorities in 1999. After Ramirez's capture, the group splintered, guerrilla activity diminished sharply and previous conditions returned to the areas where the Shining Path had been active. Some Shining Path and MRTA remnants managed to stage minor scale attacks, such as the January 1993 wave of attacks and political assassinations that occurred in the run up to the municipal elections, which also targeted U.S. interests. These included the bombing of two Coca Cola plants on January 22 by Shining Path, the RPG attack against the USIS Binational Center on January 16, the bombing of a KFC restaurant on January 21, both by the MRTA, and the car bomb of the Peruvian headquarters of IBM on January 28 by Shining Path. On July 27, 1993, Shining Path militants drove a car bomb into the U.S. Embassy in Lima, which left extensive damage on the complex worth some USD $250 and nearby buildings. Shining Path confined to their former headquarters in the Peruvian jungle and continued smaller attacks against the military, like the one that occurred on October 2, 1999, when a Peruvian army helicopter was shot down by SP guerrillas near Satipo, killing five, and stealing a PKM machine gun which was reportedly used in another attack against an Mi-17 in July 2003. Despite Shining Path being mostly defeated, more than 25% of Peru's national territory remained under a state of emergency until early 2000. Topic: <laughs> Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Alberto Fujimori resigned the presidency in 2000, but Congress declared him morally unfit installing the opposite Congress member Valentin Paniaga into office. He rescinded Fujimori's announcement that Peru would leave the Inter-American Court of Human Rights and established a Truth and Reconciliation Commission CVR to investigate the conflict. The commission was headed by the president of Catholic University Solomon Lerner Febris. The commission found in its 2003 final report that 69,280 people died or disappeared between 1980 and 2000 as a result of the armed conflict. A statistical analysis of the available data led the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to estimate that the Shining Path was responsible for the death or disappearance of 31,331 people, 45% of the total deaths and disappearances. According to a summary of the report by Human Rights Watch. Shining Path killed about half the victims, and roughly one-third died at the hands of government security forces. The commission attributed some of the other slayings to a smaller guerrilla group and local militias. 
the rest remain unattributed. According to its final report, 75% of the people who were either killed or disappeared spoke Quechua as their native language, despite the fact that the 1993 census found that only 20% of Peruvians speak Quechua or another indigenous language as their native language. Nevertheless, the final report of the CVR was surrounded by controversy. It was criticized by almost all political parties including former presidents Fujimori, Garcia and Paniaga, the military and the Catholic Church, which claimed that many of the commission members were former members of extreme leftists' movements and that the final report wrongfully portrayed Shining Path and the MRTA as political parties. Rather than as terrorist organizations, even though, for example, Shining Path has been clearly designated as a terrorist organization by the United States, the European Union, and Canada. 21st century reemergence 2002 -present. March 20, 2002 A car bomb exploded at El Polo, a mall in an upper-scale district of Lima near the U.S. Embassy. June 9, 2003 A Shining Path group attacked a camp in Ayacucho, and took 68 employees of the Argentine company Techint and three police guards as hostages. They had been working in the Camisea gas pipeline project that would take natural gas from Cuzco to Lima. According to sources from Peru's Interior Ministry, the hostage takers asked for a sizable ransom to free the hostages. Two days later, after a rapid military response, the hostage takers abandoned the hostages. According to rumor, the company paid the ransom. October 13, 2006 Guzman was sentenced to life in prison for terrorism. May 22, 2007 – Peruvian police arrested two SP members in the town of Chircampa, Huancavelica Province. May 27, 2007 – The 27th anniversary of the Shining Path's first attack against the Peruvian state, a homemade bomb in a backpack was set off in a market in the southern Peruvian city of Juliaca, killing six and wounding 48. Because of the timing of the attack, the Shining Path is suspected by the Peruvian authorities of holding responsibility. September 20, 2007 – Police arrested three SP insurgents in the city of Huancayo, Junin Province. March 25, 2008 – Shining Path rebels killed a police officer and wounded 11, while they were performing patrol duty. October 15, 2008 – Shining Path militants attacked an army patrol, killing two and wounding five. October 20, 2008 – A group of 30 to 50 Shining Path insurgents entered a camp set up by the mining company Do Run. After delivering a short Maoist propaganda speech, before leaving, the militants stole communications equipment and food. October 2008 – In Huancavelica province, the Senderistas engaged a military and civil convoy with explosives and firearms, demonstrating their continued ability to strike and inflict casualties on easy targets. The clash resulted in the death of 12 soldiers and 2 to 7 civilians. April 9, 2009 Shining Path ambushed and killed 13 Peruvian soldiers in the Aporimac and Ene River valleys in Ayacucho, said Peruvian Minister of Defense, Antero Flores Araos. August 26, 2009 Two soldiers were killed in two separate incidents outside San Antonio de Carizales, in the Huancayo province. August 31, 2009 – Three soldiers were wounded in an encounter with SL rebels, in the San Antonio de Carizales, in the Huancayo province. September 2, 2009 – Shining Path militants shot down a Peruvian Air Force Mi-17 helicopter, later killing the two pilots with small arms fire. February 12, 2012 – Comrade Artemio was captured by a combined force of the Peruvian army and the police. President Olanta Humala said that he would now step up the fight against the other remaining band of Shining Path rebels in the Inaporimac Valley. April 14, 2012 A helicopter crashed after an SP sniper killed a police helicopter pilot during a hostage rescue operation in the Peruvian Amazon. Four soldiers were also wounded in the crash. The operation started when SP took up to 40 hostages, demanding a $10 million ransom. 1,500 soldiers were deployed into the abduction area in order to participate in the operation. April 27, 2012 – Senderista rebels killed three soldiers and wounded two others in the aftermath of an ambush. May 2012 – It was reported that since 2008, 71 security forces personnel had been killed and 59 wounded by Shining Path ambushes in the VRAE region. 
August 11, 2013 The Peruvian army killed three Shining Path rebels, including senior commander Comrade Olipia. November 8, 2013 General César Díaz was removed from the position of Chief of the Joint Command of Special Operations and the Intelligence Command in the VRAEM. The decision came in the aftermath of the 16 October aerial bombing of Mazangaro which killed one civilian and injured four others. February 2014 The Shining Path were reported to have attacked a Transportadora de Gas del Peru natural gas work camp in Peru's Cusco region. April 10, 2014 Peruvian authorities arrested 24 people on charges of SP affiliation. June 18, 2014 Security forces killed three and injured one Shining Path insurgents during an apartment raid in the Etcheret region. October 5, 2014 Two policemen were killed and at least five injured when they were attacked by SP rebels in the VRAEM region. October 14, 2014 – One soldier was killed and four injured in the aftermath of an ambush conducted between Chalhuamaya and the town of San Francisco, VRAEM. A civilian was also injured in the attack. December 17, 2014 – The garrison of the Lochegua Army Base, in Wanta Province successfully repelled a Shining Path attack, one soldier was wounded following the skirmish. April 9, 2016 – Two soldiers and one civilian were killed, and six other soldiers were injured when guerrillas believed to be part of the Shining Path group, hidden in the jungles of the Junin region attacked a truck carrying soldiers to protect voting stations in Lima, as presidential elections were to be held the following day. August 2, 2016 – The Joint Command of the Armed Forces reported that yesterday at 11 p.m. suspected terrorists attacked a military base in the Mazamari district, in the valley of the Aporimac River, Ean and Mantero abbreviated commonly VRAEM, leaving the balance of a wounded soldier. September 27, 2016 – At least three people, one soldier and two civilians were injured in a shooting, there is a detainee in Wincavelica. December 13, 2016 – A policeman died during an operation in the town of Apachita in Vram region. December 14, 2016 – Two policemen another was seriously injured and four narcoterrorists died after a clash in the Vram region, known for hosting remnants of Sendero Luminoso and the high traffic of drugs. March 12, 2017 – Militants of Sendero Luminoso attacked a helicopter of the armed forces of Peru, the latter responded to the attack leaving as balance several wounded attackers. March 18, 2017 – Three policemen were killed and another injured during an ambush in Ayacucho region. May 31, 2017 – According to Channel N, it would be a narco-terrorist attack in which two members of the National Police of Peru were shot dead in the VRAEM region. July 21, 2017 – Lochegua clashes, an armed confrontation and attempted rescue rescued 10 policemen and a prosecutor injured in Lochegua, in the department of Ayacucho. A leader of a local armed group was arrested in the operation. August 1, 2017 – A Peruvian soldier died and seven other rebels were wounded in an ambush in a clash between the army and remnants of Shining Path. In other incident in the same district at least one soldier was killed and other three were wounded. September 6, 2017 – At least three police were shot dead by suspected militants at approximately 6 p.m. in the province of Chircampa, Wincavelica region. September 22, 2017 – A military patrol and a group of Sendero Luminoso remnants clashed Thursday in a sector of the Vram in Ayacucho without causing injuries, reported the Joint Command of the Armed Forces. A policeman was killed and four injured. A guide were also injured and one missing by the 116 of the Interoceanic Road, 15 minutes by motorcycle, in the section of Puerto Maldonado, Mazuco, Madre de Dios. June 7, 2018 – Four policemen were killed in an ambush by terrorists in the Anco district of Chircampa province in the Huancavelica region of Peru. June 11, 2018 – A group of terrorists attacked a military base in the town of Mazangaro in the province of Satipo in Peru. Six soldiers were injured in the shooting. Topic. See also 2009 Peruvian political crisis List of designated terrorist organizations Topic. References Topic. External links Truth and Reconciliation Commission 
International Center for Transitional Justice, Peru.